HMS Campbelltown and her escort of 20 motorboats slowly made their way to the dry dock of Saint-Nazaire, southern France. It was pitch black, and the disguised British commandos had just passed a German checkpoint. They had fooled the German searchlights, but it was only a matter of time before they discovered they were intruders with a reckless and almost impossible mission. Campbelltown was a Trojan horse. She was full of explosives hidden in her bow, set to detonate once she rammed the dry dock. The odds of survival were low for the 600 enlisted men, but the dice were cast, and they were ready to wreak havoc. The port was heavily defended, from machine guns and artillery emplacements to anti-aircraft batteries. 6,000 Germans were under high alert to attack immediately. While the commandos prepared their weapons below deck, the deafening sound of alarms alerted them that the time had come. It was time to lower the false German flags and raise the Union Jack to fight for king and country. Service History USS Buchanan was a Wix-class destroyer named after Franklin Buchanan, a Confederate officer from the Navy during the American Civil War. The vessel was launched and commissioned in January 1919. The destroyer was attached to the Pacific Fleet with Destroyer Flotilla 4 and served in San Diego for some years before being dispatched to the West Coast in the 1930s. Buchanan was recommissioned in 1935 as tensions with the Empire of Japan increased and Germany built its power in Europe. She was placed in reserve in 1939 and became one of the 50 destroyers transferred to the British Royal Navy in September 1940 as part of the Destroyers for Bases Agreement. The warship was commissioned with the Royal Navy in mid-September at Canada and headed for Plymouth through Newfoundland. She arrived at Devonport Dockyard on September 29th, where she underwent repairs and modifications to begin service with the Royal Navy. It was then that USS Buchanan became HMS Campbelltown. She displaced 1,260 tons, had a length of 314 feet, a beam of 30 feet, and a draft of 9 feet. The Wix-class destroyer comprised a power plant of two Brown Curtis single-reduction geared steam turbines, four Norman return flame boilers, and two shafts providing 30,000 horsepower, allowing the vessel to reach a top speed of over 35 knots. She had a complement of 158 officers and enlisted men, with an armament of four 102mm guns, one 76mm gun, and two 533mm torpedo tubes. Following harbor trials, HMS Campbelltown joined the 17th Flotilla, operating in the Western Approaches as an escort destroyer. The Kings of the Seas The early months of 1942 kept the British on their toes, despite the U.S. entering the war. Although Winston Churchill had succeeded in drawing the Americans to the Allied effort, he knew that British morale severely needed a notable victory to raise the national spirit. The Battle of Britain was not yet over. The Luftwaffe and the Royal Air Force were still dogfighting over the skies of the United Kingdom, and Kriegsmarine submarines were decimating convoys full of goods that the population and the army desperately required. If that was not enough, the German U-boat fleet had reached over 200 vessels. Over half of them operated on the Atlantic, isolating the British from their colonies and external support and commerce with the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Kriegsmarine surface commerce raiders also posed a threat to Allied convoys. Although the Royal Navy had previously sunk Bismarck, the most powerful European battleship ever developed to that point in time, her sister ship, Tirpitz, was still roaming the waters of the North Sea and the Atlantic. Tirpitz weighed over 50,000 tons, had a top speed of 30 knots, a range of 8,000 nautical miles, four dual sets of 38-centimeter guns, torpedo tubes, 10.5-centimeter and 15-centimeter guns, and many more anti-aircraft guns. She was heavily armored and could easily outgun and outrun any warship of her time. Churchill and the Admiralty were obsessed with sinking Tirpitz, to the point that he even said, quote, The whole strategy of the war turns at this period on this ship. Operation Chariot Sinking the second most advanced vessel of the Kriegsmarine would be a heavy blow to Germany and a great moral victory for the British people. Moreover, the threat to Allied convoys would be significantly diminished. With this in mind, Churchill and his friend, Lord Louis Mountbatten, head of the Combined Services Command, commenced planning Operation Chariot. The purpose was to destroy or severely damage the last safe haven for Tirpitz in the Atlantic. The target was the port of Saint-Nazaire in southern France, as it was the only dry dock in the region that could house the colossal Tirpitz. The state-of-the-art dock measured over 300 meters by 50 meters and had a depth of over 16 meters. 
Besides repairing and refueling warships, the dock also provided shelter for the German submarine fleet, making it extremely important for Axis operations in the Atlantic. The submarine pens were made of reinforced concrete roofs to withstand air attacks, rendering every aircraft bombing operation useless. Over 6,000 German troops and plenty of anti-aircraft batteries guarded San Nazaire. With air and naval bombing air operations out of the way, given the German defenses, the British decided a top-secret commando operation was the only feasible way to get close to San Nazaire and sabotage it. An elite force of no more than 600 men would infiltrate the dock by force with a destroyer full of timed explosives. It was reckless and almost impossible, but no more ideas were left on the table. The Admiralty approved the reckless plan, and HMS Campbelltown was chosen to be filled with explosives and detonated at the port. Harsh Reality Operation Chariot encompassed 600 British commandos distributed in 20 vessels that would approach the dock, disembark, sabotage the most important facilities, crash Campbelltown in the dock gates, and leave before it detonated. Commander Robert Ryder was tasked with leading the naval portion of the raid, and Lieutenant Commander Charles Newman would lead the assault on the dock. HMS Campbelltown underwent several modifications to make it look like a German Rob Vogel class torpedo boat and give her a more familiar silhouette to the German soldiers at Saint Nazaire. 28 year old Lieutenant Nigel Tibbetts filled Campbelltown's bow with two dozen 180 kilogram depth charges. The explosives were armed with three pencil fuses that would spark 10 hours after activation. Campbelltown, two motor torpedo boats, and 16 Fairmile B motor launches were ready to leave Falmouth on March 26, 1942. Vice Admiral Louis Mountbatten told the commandos, quote, I'm confident that you can get in and do the job, but we cannot hold out much hope of your getting out again. Even if you are all lost, the results of the operation will have been worth it. For that reason, I want to tell you to tell all the men who have family responsibilities or who think they should stand down for any reason that they are free to do so, and nobody will think any worse of them. None of the commandos backed out. They were ready to sacrifice their lives for their king and country. The Greatest Raid of All The raiding force made way for San Nazaire, hoisting German flags and wearing Kriegsmarine apparel to conceal their true purpose. The commandos sighted the port at 11 p.m. on March 27th. Five RAF squadrons led a diversionary bombing run at the port to lure in German vessels stationed outside San Nazaire. As the raiding force approached the port, the commandos set the fuses. At 1.20 a.m. on March 28th, the Britons were stopped by German searchlights for a quick inspection. With the proper call signs from a captured signal book, the commandos were allowed to approach the dock. Nevertheless, one of the motorboats was spotted, and the Germans immediately opened fire. The commandos opened fire, lowered the German flags, and raised the British battle standard. The kilometer-long convoy was subjected to accurate fire from the defenders, but the commandos fought their way into San Nazaire without hesitation. Campbelltown's crew tore through an anti-submarine net and braced for impact, slamming the dry dock at 1.34 a.m. As the rest of the commandos disembarked, Lieutenant Commander Stephen Halden Beatty announced to his men, quote, Well, here we are, four minutes late. Seconds later, he lunged into the port with his men to set up explosives to continue the sabotage. Valor above all. The commandos managed to destroy some searchlights and conceal their movements from the Germans. Nevertheless, reinforcements quickly arrived to defend the submarine pens and the dry dock. Essential dock machinery, such as the fuel storage tanks, the pumping station, and several gun emplacements were destroyed even under stiff German resistance. While the men on the ground carried on with the sabotage operation, those aboard the surviving motorboats did everything they could to draw German fire and destroy shore defenses. The commando groups reunited at around 2.30 a.m. for extraction. To their dismay, however, there were not enough boats to safely extract them all. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Newman tried to cheer his men up, saying, quote, Well, chaps, we've missed the boat. We will just have to walk home. While casualties and wounded were being taken aboard the last boats, Newman and his men decided to keep fighting. The survivors were rounded up and interrogated when the fight was finally over at 7 a.m. One of the commandos, Sam Beatty, was being interrogated by a German officer when Campbelltown detonated, taking the life of 60 Axis soldiers. He grinned with the rest of the men. The mission was now finally over. Damage was so extensive that San Nazaire remained inoperable until 1949, three years after World War II had ended. 
Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Seas channel to find more videos about secret naval operations, and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels for more on modern military history. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos.